dad has come to pick me up. These are little car companies, little Aston Martin and baby Bugatti. Yeah, you fit a treat in here. Whoa, that's fast. So I have given absolutely no context of where we are and why we're here. We're on our way to Silverstone to go do a race this weekend and we're stopping off at Bista Heritage. One reason is to set up some cars and then the other reason is to hang out because this place is absolutely amazing. Look in here, there's a few like escorts. So if you've never heard of Vista Heritage, it's basically stepping back maybe a hundred years in automotive life. It is incredible. But what a piece of art that thing is. It's like being dropped in a Forza Horizon map or something. You're just driving around. Look at it. Oh my God. Look at us, we look ridiculous. So a little bit of backstory, little car companies owned by someone we raced with, Benja Headley, and Lou also works here. Uh, so technically it is an official Bugatti. Um, it's just made by us uh, in um, partnership with Bugatti. And don't you make the only Ferrari made in out? Yeah, so it, we have the first Ferrari made outside of Maranello and it also holds the lap record at Fiorano for the fastest electric Ferrari around the track, um, as set by Top Gear. That is epic. <laughs> so, tiny little detour on the way. Now racing to Race Logic to get racing. a Racing? Huh? We're racing to Race Logic. We're not racing to Race Logic. You said that. Oh, pick up a uh, camera for my V-Box because mine is broken. And then we've also got to do one more detour after this. So the beautiful thing about racing at Silverstone is that everything motorsport is local. What is also close is EBC Brakes. And they're one of my sponsors this year and we're going to go to their headquarters. So we've arrived at EBC headquarters right here. I didn't even realise, but this is about like 20, 30 minutes from Silverstone. So super local. So we'll be rude not to stop by and I think they've got some goodies for us. So we've got some goodies. We've got eight sets of front brakes here, so that should last us a little while. Right, successful trip. Now we've got to head back to Vista Heritage to catch up with the guys. Starting route to right. Vista Heritage. If you follow me on Instagram or TikTok or anything like that, you'll know that EBC sponsor me and they sponsor the whole team. So we have now just picked up a supply of brand new pads for the whole team, which is absolutely epic. And support like that means that we can go racing and actually make this kind of dream come true of being a racing driver just keeping down the cost even the small things like brake pads make a huge difference great success cars unloaded david's car's getting set up dan's van i've cleaned it lou's car you cleaned it yeah look it's shiny good job dan and lou are doing some last minute setups right now so dan's made these string line bars look how cool they are so they're very specific to this cake room and this is the front one it's got a logo on it which is very sexy Loaded. We're heading away from a little car company now in Vista. We're now heading straight to the track. It's like a quarter to ten and we're allowed in at ten, so it should be perfect timing. All cars are geo. We've got new pads in now, courtesy of EBC. Uh, yeah, we'll see you in the morning. Right, so welcome to Silverstone. We've made it here at last. We've set up camp. We've got all three hardline cars set up here. It's Friday testing. We're going to go out for testing now. That's recording. I'm ready to go. Let me know in the comments, do you like these segments? Because uh, the people I've spoken to, some people absolutely love this bit. So maybe I should just do more like this. Driving down the paddock, we are at Silverstone racing at the GP circuit. Probably one of the worst circuits in the UK for catering racing, just because of the uh, nature of the tow. And if you don't know what I mean by tow, it's a slipstream effect. It's like having DRS every single lap, all the time, and not be able to turn it off. So the person in front just sucks the person in from behind, and you can actually get an extra seven mile an hour down the main straights. And lucky for us, there's uh, three straights on the GP circuit, so it means if you're in front on the last lap, you're screwed. A bit like Zanvoort. So we're out with the three tens today. But if I look slow, it's because they're really far. Show my wristband to this old bloke. <laughs> understeer! <laughs> I think there's an art to understeering. Almost harder than drifting, I would say. Someone's bonnet! <laughs> 
God. Too much curb. I mean, you don't want to go around the outside here. Don't want to break. This is the tangent, man. Oh, mate. Wild. Wild. <laughs> I expected the rear end to grip a lot more than it did there. That was embarrassing. Yeah, pretty arsy. Yes, sir. Ash, the lucky girl. <laughs> Look at the speed of that. Mercy, thank you all. Shame about this track is it's a two and a half minute track. Like that. So it takes ages to get round. If you want to try to get one corner, you've got to wait another two and a half minutes before you get another go. Very, very easy to lock the today. Back the legs. Walk in there. I don't think it's going to be there. Not sure this guy is, but he's definitely loving it. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba! He's not standing up. I don't know what you could hear from that in-car footage, but it was a blast. That was good fun. I wasn't, I'm not too concerned about speed around this track because the toe is so important. There's no point looking for temps because you can find a second with a good toe, so you just need to get lucky. Breaking down data, having a look at why they're fast, where they're fast. David was much faster than me in that. We're going to do some more testing today and I'll catch up with you later. So this is usually what happens in the evening. Dan works on the cars and we all just sit around like numpties and watch and drink beer and eat food. So we just found out that my front shock was about to fall out. Lovely bolt that was holding the shock literally in had snapped. So that was literally about to go kaboom. Uh, yeah, testing was good. Fast, hot. Quicker in the morning, slower in the afternoon. Are you just talking about yourself? Yeah. David was much faster than me. Which, which uh, is unusual. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm sure it'll change tomorrow when qualifying comes round. Right, let's see what happens tomorrow. Take a pew. Right, Lulu, how did the testing go? It was good. Yeah, yeah, really, really good. So testing was great, not just for me, but the whole team. Lou actually had learned to heel toe in one session. Literally, you should see the, the V-Box footage. It's like an auto blip. It's like car porn, isn't it? You watch it and you're like, yes, Lou, let's go. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why I waited so long to actually learn to do it. Yeah. But yeah, like four, you break into a corner and your car's like, Ugh! Yeah. And now I break into a corner and the car's like, okay. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, yeah I'm really looking forward to quality today. Um, we'll see how it goes, but yeah, it should be good. Yeah. Predictions? Yeah, predictions. Oh, uh, well, we've got a few we've interlopers got a big today. We've got, um, I reckon the top 10 for her. And I, I'm top five for me would be fantastic. And I reckon David would be in the top five as well. Well done. Well done. Well, that was good, wasn't it? Yeah, that good was one. Really close. I think what, about half a second, four tenths in the top. Yeah. Seven. You were sitting P3 for a long time. Yeah, yeah that was really good. You sat P1 for a long time. Yeah, that's half amazing. So yeah. quality was an absolute great success. We, like I said earlier, the toe is so important, and uh, to get a good toe round there, we buddied up and we went four up and tried to give ourselves the best toe possible. Um, and it played off really well, didn't it? For me and David at least, Lou dropped off very early on. You guys ditched me. I, we didn't you ditched me. me. No, you technically ditched. you ditched us. Um, what happened to qualify for me? So I had just some lovely fresh air for a little bit. Um, refreshing. Which, it was refreshing, but obviously not, not great for my lap times. Different tyres on these, changed the setup and it was absolutely on fire. So, so quick. So, yeah. Dan got rushed. Dan, Dan! That's not me, mate. That's just attracted. Dan, Dan got lucky again. Out for a track run. The girls are on the bikes. Look at that girl. Go on, David. You better not be this slow tomorrow, mate. This is Maggots and Beckett's. We're using all of this curb, all of this section and the rest, and the bit of grass potentially, to get us a good line out and exit for the main straight. Look at these. That's at least like maybe a hundred quid worth of tire in it. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh. So race one started super well for me. Obviously I started P2 for qualifying. So I followed Freddie through and I've got him up the inside of Brooklyn's. We're coming down the back straight here. I just move over, get back in the slipstream and then I make a big dive out. Similar things that I was doing at Zamfort. I'm just making use of that double toe there and it worked absolutely perfectly. The car hovers the apex so nicely. David Rook got between us for a little bit, my teammate, and I'm doing a massive dive around the outside. 
As I just click fifth and just turn out the way in the braking zone, change down, I managed to make it round him. But it was my real strong point at Brooklyn's like coming in here, you see I'm in the middle and I just managed to be late on the brakes and beat them to the apex. But yeah, Brooklyn's was definitely my strongest corner and it was the corner that I wanted to be strongest at because it was the second to last corner. So I thought that was a very vital place to make moves. Um, yeah, during the race we obviously got a bit racy, me, Mark Kendall, and we got pushed back towards the other pack, which let Freddie get away, but look at us swabbling for third, well, all of us going for second or third place, and I'm just coming all the way around the outside, super, super late on the brakes, two, two wheels on the kerb, and I just get tagged there by another car, a bit sideways, but I managed to catch it, luckily I didn't spin out. Uh, here we are coming in now, challenging Mark Kendall, big lockups. I was having big problems with my brakes and having massive lockups. I still managed to make the apex every time. But So once Freddy got a, got a good length away, I thought now we've got to start working as a team because us fighting, we're not getting any closer to him. So I backed out of it and I uh, let them two in front so I can get the slipstream on the final lap. Uh, as you can see in the video, absolute devastation, realizing what I've done. That was a fourth place finish for me, but look at these lockup marks. I've definitely had too, too many lockups. So, um, yeah, I'll have to dial that in for Just race Just getting two. ready, it's day two. Race one went very well yesterday, other than a little strategy error, which made, um, basically didn't know it was last lap. It was very silly, but um, you learn, you live and you learn, and I'm gonna go full send today and hope for the best. So reviewing footage, I realized that they did not put a last lap board out. That's why I did not capture the last lap. But yeah, starting race two and fourth, it didn't take long to get back to the front of the grid because of the nature of the tow, but there was a whole pack coming after us this time. He's a bit twitchy through there, but I managed to square it up nice and early, get him right behind him. And as I pull to his right, I uh, don't know if he doesn't see me or whatnot, but he just pushes me on the grass and I'm on the horn. Coming through the apex of the corner, I change up and he just smacks me in the back basket which is totally unnecessary, but hey ho. I just wanted to leave this clip in to show you, like I was talking about the DRS earlier, the slipstream of a Catrum. So look, I'm right behind him and look how much speed I pick up. He's not lifting off, I'm just pulling harder and harder because he's put a hole in the air, which has given me less drag and I can actually push straight past him. So that is the effect of the slipstream, it is crazy. So it didn't matter if I beat him into Brooklyn's, if I went around the outside, or if I went around the inside, it didn't matter because he had such a good run out of that final hairpin. He always managed to beat me to the finish line by either 0.01 seconds to 0.08 seconds. But he was consistently, consistently beat me over the line. So I followed him through a few times. I tried the outside line, inside line, none of it worked. So after trying absolutely everything and not being successful over the line, I thought I'd throw it right down the inside again and uh, try and just push him as wide as possible. I've got quite a solid lead here. I've got about a car and a half lengths and I take the car corner nice and wide, get on the throttle really early out of the hairpin, but he's looking a bit wild around there, but he still gets this amazing slingshot all the way around and still manages to beat me by two one hundredths of a second. Anyway, let's look at race three. Started P2, we, started, we broke a gap pretty early on, to be honest. Me and Freddie just slipstreaming each other. Roger packed key behind me and David Rook. We made quite a good gap at the beginning of the race. Race three, I knew it was important to get the fastest lap because that is an extra point on my championship. After Freddie got a win and a fastest lap, I knew I did not want him to get another win and fastest lap because even down to last year, we went into the final round tied in points and I got beaten just by a few points. I know just how a few points are so vital at the end of the year, I did not want to give it to him. So luckily I managed to hold the fastest lap for the whole race. Well, I'll throw it up a little bit different. I'll uh, let Owl lead going down into Brooklyn's and I'll be as late as possible on the brakes trying to push him out wide. He managed just to get his nose just under me and back up around the outside. And I thought if I keep him on the dirty side of the circuit, he won't be able to get the drive. But actually he still managed just to grip up around the dirty side of the circuit and get that acceleration and pull away from me. So. Yeah, that was one worth trying, but it didn't pay off this time. Um, his car was just so good around that last corner. You got nine seconds ahead of everyone. I think I ended up more than that. Ready to go, Jazz is rolling, perfect. Good weekend? Great weekend, thank you. Loved it. Good weekend? Excellent weekend. Good weekend all round. Started off a bit slow for me. 
wasn't quite happy with my results in race one, but then race two and race three, I got a second place and then another second place on the fastest lap. So good, po good points all round. And how did you get on? Yeah, great weekend. First podium. First P2. ever podium. Yes, at Silverstone, which was fab. Yeah. Great race. Race two was a lot of carnage, a lot of crashing, a lot of bashing, but survived it, got P5 and then P4 in race three. So it's not a bad points, points nice very good. Results. I think that leaves in third place in the championship as well, which oh, is so. very good. All right, all right, all right. Lulu, <laughs> had some good races. Yeah, really good races. Uh, no podium for me. <laughs> Um, but some really, really good racing um, with actually some of the, the new guys who come over from, or come out of retirement, I should say, and come over from grad, so that was really nice. Nice. Um, yeah, what I was going to say, it was a lot of carnage. I don't it know what was. you lot were doing up the front, but there it were wings carnage, flying over, yeah. there were lights flying off, it was kind of like this. I could see it but in my mirrors, but I'm Mario Kart. glad I wasn't involved. But anyway, we'll see you guys next at Fruxton. Dan's making a lot of noise. See you at Fruxton, where Lou's going to get a podium. Yes. I'm going to win. He's going to get a win, and I'm going to win the championship, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right, we can all dream. Right, nice one. <laughs> Thanks for watching.